Now, earlier, we saw Jeremy driving this Bentley Continental GT, and he pointed out, quite rightly, that it's as new money as an Onyx mug tree. And that had me wondering, what's the old money being spent on these days? The British Toff. Though rare and endangered, they are easy to identify. Well done, Rupert! They are most readily spotted in the countryside because they own it. Distinguishing features include their clothing, which used to belong to their parents, and their characteristic mating call of harumph. Everything they have, like their families, their titles and their houses, is very old. Because toffs don't buy things, they only inherit them. And this includes their cars, which are oily old bags of bolts and smell of dogs. In fact, the aristocracy just doesn't care for spending money on transport. Let's imagine you're master of all you survey. And it's most of Buckinghamshire. And let's imagine the time has come to replace the ancestral transport. Now this means you're going to have to do something very unaristocratic. Buy a brand new car. Well, here it is. It's the new Subaru Legacy Outback. So, why this? Why not something German and obvious? Well, for a start, it's very discreet, and your lord and ladyship don't want anything too showy. Bad form. Its radiator grille has no real presence. In fact, it has the look of a car you could lose in a station car park, and that's just perfect. Secondly, the Outback is tough and well-built, so it can be handed on from generation to generation. It has an excellent four-wheel drive system and good ground clearance, which is useful because the drive up to the house was built by William the Conqueror, and it's a bit rough. And just look at these materials. Look at this gear knob. It's going to take years for the dog to chew its way through that lot. I heard a story recently about a landed lady who bought one of these for her farm manager. But when she tried it, she decided it's far too good for him. So she kept it. Charlie, come on. And frankly, that's as it should be. Because the knobs have always liked Subaru. And there's a good reason for that. When the first ones came to Britain in 1977, there were no dealers. So they were sold alongside muck spreaders and tractors at farm equipment showrooms. Just the sort of place where the landed gentry hangs out. This also meant they didn't have to go into town and visit a car dealership, where they might have had to mingle with the proletariat. Now, to be honest, previous legacies were a bit agricultural. They had harsh interiors and rather lumpen engines. But this new one is much, much more sophisticated. Now, that's probably not of much concern to the posh people up in the big manor house, but it makes it much more appealing to those of us in the grasping lower orders. Now, Lord Bufton, he doesn't really care that the engine is a brand new three litre flat six. But of course we do, because it's smoother and more powerful than the old four-cylinder donkey engine you used to get. You probably also won't notice that the interior is now much smarter, because what's the point when it'll all be eaten by the dog anyway? But the rest of us are actually chuffed to bits in our small-minded and aspirational sort of way, because the interior of this car used to be very basic and hosed down, but now look at it, it's like a Honda. And look at these gadgets. This is one of the finest satellite navigation systems I've ever used. Mind you, it's a bit pointless if you really are an aristocrat because then you'd own a whole county. Then you can't fit that on the screen. I almost forgot to tell you what it's like to drive. Well, I quite like it, actually. It's relaxing and it's unstressful. Agreeable is probably the right word. Nothing more than that, but that'll be plenty. Finally, we come to the vulgar business of money. This car will cost £28,000, which seems a lot. But then again, it's expected to last for several hundred years. 
one day it will be very old and battered and probably a bit whiffy. But it'll be around long after socialism and the fox hunting ban have been completely forgotten. Maybe the aristocrats aren't quite as daft as they look. They don't spend money very often, and when they do, they spend it very carefully. Once every few generations, they might get a new coat, or have the roof done, or buy a car. This should be all the car they'll ever need. And I knows my place, so it'll do for me as well. Right.